We're joined now by uh, President Obama's former National Security Advisor, Tom Donlan. Uh, uh, Mr. Donlan, thank you so Good much morning, for Bob. coming. Well, you heard this thing that we know so little about, the uh, Russian ministry saying that they've agreed to settle this uh, through constitutional reform in Ukraine, Secretary Kerry and, and uh, Foreign Minister Lavrov. Uh, what is your take on that? I think that Christine Brennan is right. I'd be very cautious about any reaction to this at this point. Uh, there's been on the table now for a while, including uh, during the course of the Prime Minister of Ukraine's acting Prime Minister's visit this week, on the table an offer to discuss uh, the situation in Crimea, and offer to discuss the arrangements and Russian interest and autonomy there. But that's going to require the Russians to do a couple of things, including talk directly to the Ukrainian government in Kiev. It's something they haven't been willing to do at this point. Uh, and Margaret I also did point out this is the first time that uh, that the Russians have said anything like this, though. Well, I, well, we, but it would still require them to actually sit down and have a conversation with the interim government in Kiev, and they have been willing to do that to this point. And this has been a set of issues, Bob, which have been on the table for some time now, including by the Ukrainian interim foreign minister when he was here this week. And I'd add, we see no sign of the operation in Crimea uh, standing down or uh, in any way. Uh, losing steam with respect to what the Russians are doing there. And that essentially, what they're doing there is they're really executing a black operation. It, to the contrary, they, they moved in and seized this uh, area outside Crimea uh, where these uh, gas uh, distribution plants That's exactly are. right. And I think Chairman Rogers was exactly right about this. This is part of the overall operation. Uh, they fear uh, once the referendum uh, goes through today, and the, and the outcome is pretty, pretty much preordained because it's taking place under full occupation as part of the Russian operation, they fear a gas or an energy cutoff. Crimea is a dependent region in Ukraine. I think we make a mistake when we expect President Putin to react to situations in the way that those of us in the West might react. But what does he want here, and what caused this? Yeah, well, I think when, when he th uh, President Putin, for him, these concepts of balance of power, sphere of influence, zero-sum outcomes are very real concepts, uh, and he pursues them. And with respect to Ukraine specifically, he had a big blow. Uh, he essentially had uh, Ukraine reject a move to Russia and embrace uh, the, uh, a move to Europe, uh, and he saw real loss here and acted to try to regain leverage and some uh, uh, ability to destabilize the situation, get leverage back in the situation. That's what happened here, Bob. It was a real blow to his concept of sphere of influence in Ukraine. It was a blow to this fanciful idea he has of a Eurasian Union as a counterpoint to the European Union. And without Ukraine, that's not just fanciful, it's impossible. And he's acted here, and he's acted essentially with, a, with kind of a military black operation in Crimea. I'm going to ask you to stick around for part two of our broadcast because we want to continue to cover this story yeah. with the breaking news. Uh, we'll uh, talk to him some more in a few minutes, and I'll be back in a moment with some personal thoughts. And former uh, Obama National Security Advisor Tom Donilon is back with us for more on this uh, breaking story that's developing this morning in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Donilon, uh, what can we do? I think we can do. I think we can do quite a bit, frankly, and we must do. This is an important leadership moment. I, I, uh, I reacted uh, in agreement with your commentary, uh, Bob, which we just heard here. Which this is an important leadership moment for the United States and for the West. This is a challenge to the post Cold War order in Europe, uh, an order that we had uh, a lot to do with in putting in place. Respect for sovereignty, respect for territorial integrity. This is a really important moment, and we can, and we have to act. And I think we can act. First, to support the Ukraine government uh, politically and embrace it, which the, you saw the president do this week. Second is to support uh, the Ukraine government, especially now in the short term here with financial aid, to ensure that it can stand up uh, under Russian pressure, which will come. Third is to reinforce our NATO and reassure our NATO allies, and president, Vice President Biden's going to Lithuania and Poland, I believe, tomorrow to do just that. But very importantly, to really indicate what the costs are going to be to Russia for this kind of conduct, for Putin's conduct here, for this action. And that can be substantial, frankly. You know, you can stand defiantly in this world, as Putin is doing, and define your foreign policy as basically a counter-distinction and wholly negative against the rest of the world. You can do that. And again, you saw at the UN yesterday, 13 to 1 yesterday, there was a vote saying that the uh, Crimea referendum was not legal and shouldn't go forward. Even the Chinese abstained their strategic partner. But tremendous price can be paid. You're already seeing it. Uh, they've cut growth estimates in Russia by half, the ruble's fallen, uh, the stock market's fallen, and that's even before a single sanction's been put in place. We'll see sanctions on Monday to begin, both in the United States and in Europe. I oversaw the sanctions regime for four and a half years against Iran. This is a powerful weapon in a globalized economy. But, you know, uh, apparently uh, Putin's popularity is going up at home. 
in I the mean, short he, term. He is obviously playing to the crowd at home he, like all politicians do. I think that's exactly right, and you've seen his popularity go up, uh, largely through the efforts of a propaganda campaign and nostalgia for getting back this Crimea, uh, uh, for getting back Crimea, which was given to Ukraine by Nikita Khrushchev in the 1950s. There is some of this nationalism which he has built up there, but over time here, there's, real, there's a real cost to be paid for Russia and the Russian people. It's not necessary. Putin's rejected integration here in favor of kind of standing defiantly, and as I said before, he really has put his economy at risk. Is the Cold War that we used to know about, is it back? I mean, well, is, it, is the war getting cool here? Well, the Cold War was a, was a, was a global contest between two systems uh, uh, with, with an existential threat to the, United, to the United States. That's not the case today. Russia is not anywhere near that kind of power. Uh, but I do think we're in for here, given that Putin shows no signs of backing, uh, backing down here, I think we're in for a very difficult time in Russia-U.S. relations. Of course, uh, under sequestration, yeah. uh, the administration had to start reducing defense spending. Do you see that this may require uh, the president going to Congress and say, we can't do this now? We've, we've got something new to think about here. We have uh, tremendous military assets under the current budget and the projected budgets here. I don't think it's a matter of, of defense spending here. It's a matter of leadership. Uh, it's a matter of kind of, st kind of stepping up to the moment here and, and doing the things that we talked about here in terms of embracing the Ukraine government and indicating the real cost that Putin will have to pay here. And there are costs. That this, this, this line that you hear in Washington that there's nothing we can do about this is just not, is just not true. Uh, I think we have all the defense uh, and military as uh, uh, assets that we need to implement our foreign policy in Europe and around, and around the world. But this is an important leadership moment, Bob. You do not see the United States uh, sending troops into the Ukraine. I don't. I don't. I, I see the United States sending troops into the Ukraine. But I do see the United States leading an effort to embrace the Ukraine and, su and support it in a lot of ways, economically, politically, and perhaps with military assistance. All right. Thank you so much. Thank Mr. you, Bob. Donlan, Great to be here. And we'll be back with our panel in one minute.